everyone and welcome to another video for those of you who are new to my channel my name is Brenda and I swatch a lot of nail polishes I recently talked about this topic on my Instagram and a lot of you show interest in me sharing with you what are my best tips and what kind of products do I use to swatch the amount of polishes that I swatch while also providing some very high quality content and overall what are the products that I use to protect my nails from all these polishing so if you're a nail swatcher like me who swatches a lot of polishes you probably know a lot of these tips but you might learn a few things and if you're just getting started and you're trying to find a way to make this something more easy for you then I will suggest for you to keep watching this video I'll be sharing my best tips and the best products things that works the most for me when it comes to swatching so without further ado let's get started So all of this started because I was talking about it on my Instagram and a lot of you who already swatched out polishes show interest in the topic. So that is the reason why this video idea came up and I actually love that because some of you would have not asked for it. I would probably not even think about it myself. So here we go. As some of you might know, I swatch a lot of nail polishes and I have been swatching polishes for quite some time. So. This is mostly targeted to nail swatchers who want to learn more on those products that I use to keep my nails healthy while swatching a bunch of polishes and removing a lot of nail polish off my nails and doing this quite often. So this is not for the everyday use, regular nail polish user or consumer. This is mostly for people who swatch a lot of nail polish. As we go, I will try to show you a demo or insert a clip on what I'm talking about, but for the most part, I'll just be talking and I will try to insert some images so you get some visuals. As usual, when I make these type of videos, I have a list in here of things that I wanna share with you. So hopefully I won't forget any of the important things that I wanted to mention but if I do I will just insert a voiceover so let's get started so I will walk you step by step on my swatching process and the first thing will be remove the polish that I am wetting currently I'll talk more in detail later but usually I go three four days wearing the nail polish nail art that I want to wear then I will remove the polish and then I'll batch swatch which is swatching a couple of polishes during the same day the same day or same night or whatever and then I'll paint my nails again wear nail art and then just repeat the cycle over and over so first off is removing my nail art or nail polish that I'm wearing at the moment for these I was on the fence for so long about purchasing this soya nail polish remover and if you are on the fence about purchasing that product go and get it like seriously go and get it i never like the regular polish removers that you will find in stores because i feel like they don't do a great job and you usually have to rub off the polish for a long period of time before it comes off so my go-to option used to be pure acetone the problem with this product is that yeah it makes it really easy to remove the polish but it's not very gentle on your nail and you will immediately notice how much it dries your cuticles and even though i am really careful and i was doing my nail care routine quite often i think that had a lot to do with how healthy my cuticles looked so i ended up switching to the soya remover which is a lot more gentle on the cuticles but it's really good at removing polish and it includes even glitter polish because i honestly wear a little bit of everything and that soya polish remover is like one of the greatest things so at this point every time i go to the store because i live in the middle of nowhere I'll purchase a bottle so I have one in reserve for whenever I need a new one. Okay, so for the remover, don't use cotton balls. I have been using makeup remover pads for like the longest time and these really changed my life because cotton balls usually leave a lot of these little thingies on the nails, around the nails, on your fingers and you want one cotton, 
cotton ball you don't get much use out of it instead what I do is that I get these little uh, maker remover pads cotton pads I cut them in four pieces or more and then I use one little piece to remove polish from two nails that honestly saves a lot of cotton and also at the end it's not messy at all so please purchase some of these they are very inexpensive and one bag is going to last you forever my family actually knows that I use use these to remove my polishes so they will always buy me some here and there and I have a big stash of this. Uh, there's all kinds but I usually like the ones that are just plain that don't have anything on them. Honestly I'll just use whatever but those are usually my favorite ones. Alright so usually after I have removed my polish I would notice if my nails are not in the shape that I like. I like the square nail shape so I usually will go with a glass file and just fix up those nails that I think need a little re I do this quite often because I don't really know but I don't feel like keeping up with this core shape is as easy. I do file my nails very often and I try to give them all at the same length so that is why I will usually go with the glass file before I apply any polish. So again this is the order in which I do things. I am honestly obsessed with the one by Treasure Valley Lacquer. I received this in PR and ever since I have been using that non-stop. My second favorite will be the one by Shop NBM and they have the mini file so I usually just have that one on the go but at my nail desk I have the one by Treasure Valley Lacquer. It's awesome and I think I have said this before in another video so I'll try to link that down below. Okay the next step will be oiling the nails and there is a reason why I do that at the very beginning. I apply the oil. I use an oil pen. I like this one because it is more precise. If I, you don't want to get it on the nail, I think this is the best option to go with. For my everyday use everywhere I go, I use the cuticle body and I have another one in my car which is like just like the regular nail polish bottle. But for swatching, I do use the oil pen. So I go with it and then I apply base coat. So base coat, this is a must. I think a lot of people and I don't really know how many but it is shocking to me that people that swatch polishes don't apply base coat and I always apply base coat even if I'm just gonna polish my nails take pictures and take them off I always always apply a base coat because I know a lot of people don't mind having yellow stained nails but I personally don't like it for my own nails so you do whatever you want but if you want to have nails that are not stained always use base coat my go-to base coat and i have been using this bottle non-stop is the one by care for my nails so i received this in pr along with a bunch of polishes and i wanted to give it a try because i was often using the sc one that was like my go-to then i tried to switch to the sesh clear base coat and i immediately noticed that my nails were staining like i was you know slowly building up that little yellow staining and i don't like that so i immediately switched back to sc and then once care for my nails came along i don't know why i gave it a try for like a week and i noticed that i wasn't getting any staining from swatching or actually wearing my nail polishes so ever since I have been using that and I'm never going back I actually just received a second bottle and I am so grateful thank you care for my nails for sending me a replacement I talked to the owner and told her how much I like the base coat so she sent me a second one and honestly you guys this is like one of the best base coat it also keeps my manicures long if i wanted to wear the polish for a long period of time but for the most part even if i am just swatching i'll use this because i know my nails will be protected and they will not stain all right so we have talked about removing polish shaping nails using oil and applying base coat <clears throat> the next step in the process and you guessed it, we have finally gotten to applying the first coat of nail polish. So this process is the one I follow religiously, like all these things that I'm mentioning, except for shaping the nail, because you don't need to do that every day, but I do it quite often anyway. So you will apply the first coat, 
and then you will immediately clean up around the cuticles. I don't like waiting until the end because at that point I feel like so much of it has been absorbed by the cuticles and it's just harder to remove it. So as soon as I am done applying the first coat, I will go and remove it with a flat brush. The reason why I use pure acetone to remove the polish around my nails is because I feel like you does an amazing job at just grabbing the very last bit of uh, polish that you might have in there. That at the end makes a difference because I personally don't like having anything on my cuticles uh, other than oil. So if I wanna make sure that I'm removing every bit of polish, I will go and use pure acetone. Now remember that I have already used cuticle oil, so my nails are really not going to be getting dry because there is oil in there. And <clears throat> there is a trick that, the reason why I apply oil at the very beginning is that as I go cleaning up with the brush, every time I apply a coat, my cuticles are not going to look dry because they already have a solid base of oil. So whenever I'm removing polish with the acetone, my cuticles are not fully dry. They still will look moisturized. Okay, and at the end, I'm gonna put all these clips together. So you just kind of see it in real time how I do it. But for now, I'm, we're going slow. We're going step by step. So you guessed it, okay. Apply the first coat, clean the cuticles. Now you apply your second coat and then immediately again, you go ahead and clean the cuticles. All right, so something that uh, sometimes concerns me is that I see people mentioning that they use their very good top coats to for their swatches. And my question is, why would you do that? Because honestly, I use the cheap top coats, the top coats that I don't like, on my swatches and the reason why I do this is because it's a product that I'm going just wear for like five minutes so why would I spend my good top coat those that dry fast and are long lasting on a manicure that I will take off right away please save your good top coats for whenever you actually wear your nail polish you want to know I have a stash of top coats that will give me the shine that I want and make my polish and manicures look super glossy perfect for the picture. So I'll actually give the polish that I'm swatching a good glossy layer on top because you know it photographs nicely and then most people use top coat anyway so you will see how this polish look after top coat but at the same time I am not wasting a good top coat on it. So use that those cheap polishes. I <laughs> would hate to mention but I have some from China Glaze, I have some from Sally Hansen which are mainstream brands but these polishes are not quick drying, are not long lasting, are very thin, sometimes a little weird so those are the ones that I use because again I'm just going to use this for five minutes and I'll take it off so that is like a pro tip. Please don't use your good top coats on swatches. <sighs> can't stress this enough. Oh, we made it to the last step and guess what is it? If you don't have enough oil around your cuticles and they are starting to look dry because of all the cleanup that you have done, then just after I have waited for that top coat to dry a little bit, I'll go again with the oil pen and carefully apply a little bit of oil. But for the most part, for me, the good bit of oil that I had applied at the beginning will make it until the end even after I have cleaned up around the cuticle. So usually I don't apply more oil but if for some reason you have just had to clean up a lot then I will apply a little bit of oil. And then I even remove the excess just with my bare fingers so that way I am still keeping that cuticle looking all nice and moisturized but I am not leaving the excess of oil because I honestly don't like overly oiled nails on my swatches. I know sometimes it happens that I am not able to remove up as much of that oil as I would like and then whenever you take a picture like you can clearly see that it's very oily so I don't like that. So that's usually why I just do it at the beginning right before base coat and then I don't do it ever again. Well, not never again, but you know what I mean. And that's pretty much how my swatches happen. Now that I have shared all of this with you, let me try to insert the clip real time on how this process go. I'll probably speed it up so it won't take more than one minute, hopefully not.
Alrighty, so that is pretty much the process. I know I speed it up. I mean, this usually doesn't happen as quick. I do take my time because I don't like flooding my cuticles. So I'll usually go very slowly, try to polish my nails as perfectly as I can because I don't like editing the errors that I made during application on my pictures. I've never done that and it just seems like a big waste of time. So I know you probably heard this from other swatchers. I heard this from Larissa at Polish Lab Rat, where she mentioned that you better make sure your nails are being polished well rather than having to edit them because honestly, editing takes a lot of time. So um, that's just a tip in there that I think will be helpful. And hopefully all the other tips that I share with you are going to be helpful. I hope you liked this video. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments if you learned something new, if there is anything that you have questions about, or if you would like to learn more about any of the things that I mentioned in today's video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video to let me know that you like it. And I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye.